Starting with Sewer Gems and Civil Storm Connect Edition Update 4, you can now model a 2D analysis, reporting results such as surface flow, surface velocity, and water depth. The 2D analysis can be coupled with a 1D hydraulic model. You'll be able to model the 1D, 2D urban flooding and rainfall runoff, including overflows and direct rainfall on the, on the terrain. In order to compute a 2D analysis, you'll need to make sure your active numerical solver in your calculation options is set to the new 2D solver. You can see that here in the properties. The 2D analysis uses terrain models and a computational grid. This grid is the area of study for the 2D analysis. The grid can be added to the model from the 2D modeling tab in the ribbon interface. You can see the grid button here where you can add a polygon. The 2D modeling tab in the ribbon is where you'll find all of the 2D elements and tools, including reporting options. The grid will include properties like Manning's N, SCSCN, and impermeability. This will apply to the entire grid, though you can make, it, make adjustments with elements like roads, buildings, etc. to define the 2D results. These elements can be added manually, or if you have a shape file, be added through the surface definition. If you go to the 2D modeling tab, click the surface definitions button, you'll see that two shape files have already been included in this example one a building shape file, and one a shape file representing the roads. In this case, we've adjusted the building elevation to be two meters higher than the elevation on the grid, and for the for the road, we've adjusted the Manning's N value to be different. These changes will supersede the original values on the grid. Anytime you do make a change to the grid, you'll want to generate the grid again, which you do from the 2D modeling tab and click Generate Grid. You can model water inflow onto the grid in different ways. This can be from runoff on from a catchment to a node, surface flooding from a structure or pond, or inflow at a boundary point or boundary line. In this example, we have a catchment up here in the corner. The outflow element is set to one of the 2D element, it's called a boundary line. The runoff from this catchment will be applied across the entire length of the boundary line and runoff onto the, onto the grid. In this case, if you zoom in, you can see that some of the flow is actually going to this nearby catch basin and into the subsurface system. Once the model computes, you'll be able to view the results. If you go to the 2D modeling tab, you'll see an item called the grid browser. This will display results directly onto the grid, and you can see numerical results that will update as you move your cursor around in the drawing. Here we have depth selected. And that, that is what's being displayed here on the drawing as well. The lighter shades of blue are lower depths or zero depths. Darker blues will represent more uh, depth on the grid. You can also see how the results can change over time. By going up to the time browser, you can play through the different time steps. And if you watch near the road well, roadway, you'll actually see that the depth is increasing. Notice also that these areas, these void areas that represent buildings, are not seeing any kind of overflow. The following are further examples of flooding on the grid. This model shows overland flow from a catchment along roadways. This shows flooding in a parking lot. And this shows the extent of pond outflow to a low area in the terrain. By changing the radio selection, you'll be able to see the grid update with different set of results as well. If you select elevation, you can see how the elevation is changing across the grid. You can also view maximum results as it's shown here. 
In addition to the grid browser, you can also view results through profile paths or report points. A report point is just going to be a point where you might be interested in seeing the results. Here we have a location on the roadway above the subsurface network. You can see the properties will display the some of the hydraulic results, such as depth on the grid, hydraulic grade, velocity, at this point at the current time. You can also see maximum results are going to be listed in the properties as well. In addition, you can also graph the results. You right click and choose graph. You'll be able to see how the results will change over time. A profile path is just going to be a location that might be interest you might be interested in along the grid. Here I've created a profile path that cuts across the roadway through some of the uh, through some of the larger depth. If we right click, choose profile, we can see what the profile is going to look like. The red line is the maximum results. The blue line is the current time step. So if we change this, you'll actually see that the results will change. The green is the terrain on the grid, while you can also see where locations of buildings are, which is what uh, these higher elevations are indicating. In addition, it is possible to view 2D results in the 1D elements, such as a catch basin. Here I'll zoom over to this catch basin one, which is where the inflow is coming from the catchment. If we right click on that and choose graph, you'll notice that there is going to be some results for 2D as well. If we go to the results section, you'll see depth on grid, which is one of the 2D results. Click OK, and now we have the hydraulic grade results at the catch basin, as well as the reported depth on the 2D grid at this location. 2D results will also be available through the 1D profiles.